my usual videos. It's not uh, computer related per se, but it's technology that I think is pretty cool. I'm working on retrofitting all of the fluorescent uh, light fixtures I have in my house to LED. And there are two options you have. One is you can buy an LED retrofit bulb that uses the existing ballast. You don't have to do any sort of wiring reconfiguration or anything, but they don't conserve as much energy as the other retrofit bulbs that simply use the, the T8 tombstones and you modify the fixture to bypass the ballast. So I opted to go with the type that you bypass the ballast with and so far I really like them. Um, I buy this specific brand of, of light by Hyper Icon. I don't know if that's how you say their name. Um, but I thought I'd show you guys what I've been buying and sort of the uh, install process. So I buy these. These are four foot T8 LED um, bulbs. I don't know if you call them bulbs. Um, <laughs> but uh, I bought it in a pack of 12 because I have a bunch of these fixtures in my house. It's actually not enough. I ordered some more. Um, you can get them in clear, which is what I have here. These are the clear tubes. Or you can get them in frosted. I have one fixture in my closet that does not have a cover, so I ordered some frosted uh, ones for that. Um, but these are really nice. I like the light quality. I bought the 4000 Kelvin version, which they call uh, Daylight, um, which I seem to prefer. It's not a like cool white, but it's not a warm white. I feel like it gives, to me, it's the best balance, um, and I like the color temp of the light. Um, so what you get, uh, my 12 pack was actually three packs of four, and so within a four pack you get, of course, the, the LED tubes. You get one tombstone, replacement tombstone, per uh, tube. Um, in my case, I did not need to use these, but this is so in case your fixture, the tombstones are not wired in a way you can just cut and directly attach to the supply power. Um, they give you replacement tombstones in case you need to, to reconfigure those. Um, you get, of course, an instruction booklet, um, but who reads, reads these, right? Just kidding. Now you, you want to at least skim through this because there are a couple of things you do need to pay attention to when you're modifying your light fixture. And then they give you these stickers you can place on the fixture themselves, which is really handy if you think that at some point in the future somebody else is going to be replacing the bulbs in the fixture. You'll want to let them know that the fixture has been modified and you can't just put any fluorescent tube in this fixture anymore. If you put a standard fluorescent tube in this fixture, it's not going to work. I don't know what will happen. I've never applied AC current directly to a fluorescent tube, but I assume you want to avoid doing that. So, now with these fixtures, one of the things you'll want to note, and it's in the instructions here, which I have folded up, I've, I've done, I've installed all but these four, so I, I I've got a good idea of what I'm doing. Um, but with these fixtures, only one end of the tube is powered. Both ends have uh, leads that are metal. However, only one end receives power. And you can tell by flipping the tube over, you'll see it says AC input. So this side is where you get the input. This other side is just dummy terminals. So you'll want to make note of that and you'll want to pick the tombstones, designate one side of the fixture as the input side and you'll need to install this in a certain way. The other thing to note is that polarity matters with these, with these bulbs. So in the instructions it walks you through which side is neutral, which side is hot. Um, which I can actually show you here. Give me one second. So right here, you can see they give you a sample. Come on, focus. There we go. So with the fixture oriented, the way that I have them on the floor right here, the top lead would be hot and the bottom lead 
would be neutral. So hot, neutral. And so you'll want to make note of that when you're setting up your fixture, modifying your fixture. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you, show you my modified fixture. It's kind of hard to see, but here's my modified fixture. I have in both of my full baths, I have these built-in sort of light housings, for lack of a better term, as you can see here. And over on the right, I've still got the traditional fluorescent tubes in. So this is hot, so I'm not, I'm going to avoid touching it as much as I can. But let me show you what I had to do to install these LED tubes. So you have, each side has its set of tombstones. And so I have these on the left, and I have these on the right. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to ballasts, so I really don't know what this wiring does exactly. All I can tell you is that modifying this side to power the bulbs required more wiring than modifying this side. Because this side, I've got two wires, and you can't see it, but in there, each tomb, the tombstones are are jumpered together. So the upper tombstone has jumper wires that go to the lower tombstone, and so the upper wire powers the upper lead. You can see it. No, not really. And then the lower wire powers the lower lead, and that matches the bottom tombstone. So. Now in my install, I have the opposite of what the, book, the pamphlet shows. So I know that instead of the top lead needing to be hot, I need it to be the bottom lead. And I've got that set up accordingly. You can see here I've got hot. This goes here. And if we stretch these out, I said I wasn't going to touch these, but here we go. This is the bottom. And this is the top. And so you just wire those directly to the supply power and then install your bulb. You put the fixture back together and it's really not that bad. You can see I have this ballast completely disconnected. This was the old wiring to the tombstones on the right. And I don't know if you have to do this, but I do it just to be safe is I disconnected the left tombstones as well. Um, I don't think the terminals on the bulb do anything, but just to be safe, I've, I've clip these as well. And it's, you know, not a bad thing to do. If, if you wanted to go a step forward, you could remove the ballast and, and recycle it. But, uh, I'm a little lazy. I'm just going to leave it in the fixture. <laughs> so, I'm going to put this back together. And then what I'll show you guys is the light difference between the traditional fluorescent tube and these LEDs. Got these guys installed. As you can see, if you don't have a diffuser or any sort of cover on your light fixture, you definitely want the frosted bulbs. But because this fix this box has these diffusers down here, which desperately need a cleaning, um, these work fine for my application. And so here's the difference between the standard fluorescent tube and the LEDs. Um, one noticeable difference is up here, you can see on the fluorescent side, it's a little softer than on the LED side. It's a bit more uh, uh, pronounced, and that's because the LED, the light that's produced by the LEDs is a lot more directional than the light that's produced by the you know, your standard fluorescent tube. The fluorescent tubes kind of emit everywhere, whereas these are basically firing towards me or towards the other the wall of this box. Um, but it still works out pretty well. So now what I'm going to do is do the other fixture, and then I'll show you guys the finished result. Boom! Project done. LEDs produce crisper lines than the traditional fluorescent tubes, but I'm okay with that. And there's a little more shadowing under here, as you can see, because the LEDs are a bit more directional. But again, I'm okay with that. It wasn't perfect with the fluorescent tubes. Anyway, the, the traditional type. But there was a bit more disbursement of light with the traditional tubes. Um, in an ideal world, if I had built this house, I would not have done this fixture at all. 
it's cool, but I probably would have either done can lights in the true ceiling up there, or something else. Maybe a, a central light for the bathroom and some, um, what do you call it? Some task lighting for this vanity here. Um, as you can see, is for my kids. It's the kids' bathroom. But anyway, there you have it. LED lights, LED retrofit in your standard ballast-based fluorescent fixture. So I'm here in my garage where I'm also going to do the LED retrofit. This space really needs it because I'm going to turn the lights on. You're going to see how awesome they work. Yay, look at that. I think the ballasts in these are, are done. If I flick the light switch, you can see I'll kind of get light. So usually, in the winter, just keep flicking it until, and you see I miss it. Oh. Hey! Uh, kind of works. Anyway. I don't have enough to do all four of the uh, bulbs in these fixtures but I can at least put one in each and then uh, I've ordered some more and when the order comes in I can put the other two in and we'll have much improved lighting over this crapness that we have right now. And they work fine in the summer but in the winter and I'm in California and it's not even cold compared to some places of the country. <sighs> All right, so here I have one of the garage lights opened up. I've got the wiring all disconnected. Here's one end of the fixture. Got the ladder here. Where you can see I've disconnected them completely from the ballast. So nothing accidental can happen. Here's the ballast. Here's that wiring. Here's the wiring that used to go to the other side over there. Here's the supply wiring, which I'll just bundle up and stuff into the fixture. And so here's the supply power. There's two uh, hots and two neutrals because this is the first leg and then it jumps over to power the other light. So at junctions here it's chain, which is fine. So now I have to connect these tombstones. And this fixture shows you what I was talking about in the bathroom where one tombstone has these wires, and then it's jumped over to the other tombstone. Um, it's just simpler than doing the other side. Um, I suppose you could argue that if there's some sort of failure in this tombstone, it'll take out both, both lights. Whereas over here, you have independent wiring per each tombstone, so if something fails, in this guy, it doesn't affect the other guy, but I'm lazy, and we're going to take the simple route, and we're going to wire this guy. So, looking at the instructions, it shows with your hot and your neutral, and so orienting this the way that the bulb is going to be installed, the this lead needs to be hot, and this needs to be neutral. Let's double check that one more time. Orienting this the way the bulbs are going to be installed. Yep, that's it. We have hot, neutral, which will also make this one hot, neutral. I'm going to go ahead and get this wired up and show you the finished product. All right, we've got this all wired up. As you can see, direct to the high voltage, the AC power, going, going, going to the tombstone. Now to package this up and install a bulb. Alright, I've got these all finished up. Let's see what happens when I flip the switch this time. Oh, I've got light! It is beautiful! And I don't have to futz with the switch. It's a simple on-off. So now we, all I need to do at this point is when the additional uh, bulbs come that I ordered today, it's got to pop them in. 
But even with one per fixture, it's still a decent amount of light. I mean, you can see, you know, and if I turn it off, reach the switch, boom. Boom. So there you have it. Until next time.